and welcome to this presentation on installing multiple instances of a Windows service in .NET. In this demo, we are going to take a look at how to create a Windows service, maintain one copy of the service, and run multiple instances of the same service. So you could run uh, your service as service 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on and so forth. So our goals are we want to author a Windows service in .NET, c -sharp in particular, and run multiple instances of the same service. We want to maintain one copy of the Windows service code, so no duplication, even though we want to run multiple instances. We want to create one setup project for all instances, so we don't want to duplicate the setup and deployment project either. And we want to have minimal maintenance effort for developers and for administrators. That is, we do not want any hacky code. We do not want the administrators to do any hacky configurations. Quick introduction to install Shield Limited Edition. If you're not familiar, it's available as a plugin for Visual Studio. Was first introduced in Visual Studio 2010. It's still available with Visual Studio 2015. The Limited Edition, as the name suggests, is limited in functionality, but a fully featured version is available for a fee. Okay, so here I have a Windows service created, which is called My Demo Service. And all this service does is it logs messages to a file. So it uses a helper class called Logger, which has got static methods. And all it does is log to a file, a message header, a message. And a log file path is what it expects as input, which is where it goes and appends all this information. So pretty straightforward service. And this is the logger helper class that the service uses. Now here in my demo service, I have an on start method, on stop over in methods. And these methods, basically on these events, I am writing information to the same logger file. So what I want to do is I want to run this service as multiple instances so there has to be a way for the service code to know what instance of the service it is and since we are naming the instances as one two three onwards what i'm going to do is introduce a private variable here so int service id And that becomes my private variable. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the constructor of this service. And you can also reference the constructor of the service by clicking on this arrow after the service class and then going to my demo service and then right clicking on this my demo service code. And just that's when this thing will pop up. So the constructor of the service needs to know what service ID it is. So I'm going to say in service ID here, which is the input parameter. And after initialize component, I'm just going to initialize the private variable, which is the service ID, which I just defined in this class. So this is service ID. And my service is ready. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to make sure I use this log file correctly. So all the instances of the service do not write to the same log file. So this is what I'm going to do. Let me show you the application configuration. In the application configuration, this is how I have defined my application settings. Service one will use log file path one, service two will use two, and service three will use three. So I want to somehow read this using that input parameter. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say underscore log file equals configuration manager manager and you may need to add uh, reference to system.configuration DLL here to say app settings and then I'm going to say log file 
path and then append the process ID or the service ID to it. So each service will know which log file path parameter it's going to read. So this is how it's going to distinguish. So now each service gets a service ID and it will read a specific log file path from the app config and it's going to write just to that file. And you could provide this kind of distinction to do any kind of stuff like reading data from a database if you want these services to run in parallel and read data from different tables or different records, different sets of records in a table, you could do that. But the idea is you have a service ID private variable on the service and then you want to pass that value all the way to the service through the constructor and then you have the log file here in this example which is each service is going to have a different service ID and it's going to read a different parameter and then it's going to log to that log file. That is the idea. But we are not done yet. What I want to do is I want to show you how this parameter will be passed to the service. So notice that it's giving us an error in the program.cs, which is the main entry point to the application. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define the arguments that will go as input to the service. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to just read arg0. And here I'm going to pass, I'm going to just convert this to integer. So I'm going to say 2 int 32 arg0. So this is the code. So now when the service starts, it's going to read the first argument, which is going to be the service ID. And that will pass it all the way to the service. So we are done with the service code. The next thing we want to do is we want to add the installer. The way you add this installer is add new project, set up and deployment, and install C limited edition project. If you do not see this, you will probably see something that says download install shield and you'll have to go through the registration process, provide some basic information about you, name, email ID, etc. And this will be available to you as a plugin. So I'm going to call this setup project my demo service setup and then I'm going to click OK. The application information, I'm just going to provide my company name as my imaginary company. And I'll just leave the name as is. And hopefully there's no other company by that name. And in the application files option, I'm just going to click add project outputs, select my demo service and primary output click ok there are a couple of other things that are not related to what we are trying to do here which i do like such as going to installation service don't want to display licensing agreement dialogue for this demo or the company name and i'm done with the main page now the last thing i want to do here is go to step three notice there are so many steps here and go to services tab and i'm going to add in this example, I'm just going to add three services, but there is no limit on the number of services you can add as long as your server can handle it. So program files, my imaginary company, my demo setup, and then the first file that it shows here is my demo service dot primary output. And click OK. And I'm going to call it my demo service one display name. I'm sorry, I'll go back here. Display name is going to be my demo service one. If I can spell that right. And in the start parameter, I'm going to pass one. This is the process ID that will be passed by Windows instrumentation or Windows infrastructure to the service. I'm going to define two more the same way. Program files, my imaginary company, setup primary output 
and then I'm going to call this my demo service 2 and I'm going to call this my demo Two, and here I'm going to pass two as the input parameter. Then let me add one more. Again, go to program files, my imaginary, and then select this. And I'm going to call it my demo three, and then in the display name, I'm going to add. 3 and start, start parameter pass 3 so I got three services so right now I have these three services ready and all I need to do is just build and install so install which is going to build the service And the installation is done now if I take a look at the services on this machine you will notice that I got three services my demo service one two and three and if you see where they are installed they are actually installed in the same place my demo service but the first one if you see gets a one as input parameter the second one gets a 2 and the third one gets a 3. Now these three services are installed together. They are running in parallel and let me show you where they are logging their information. I got log file 1, 2 and 3 and if you see this they are logging to different log files. And Let me show you one other step here when I uninstall these guys. They will uninstall together. So here is the uninstall completed and if I go here and refresh all the three services are gone. So they get installed in the same folder but they still run in parallel. So this process is very similar to double clicking on an executable three times and running three instances or four times and running four instances of it and you're running parallel processing but each service is running in its own area so in our example the service was logging to a log file and basically they were logging to three different log files but you could design it in such a way that maybe they are reading from a table and they are reading different sets of records maybe records for one specific um, geographical area are getting processed by service one or you know the other service is processing some other geographical area so they do not step into the toes of each other and that is the idea and with this you can parallelize these windows services hope you like this demo feel free to provide any feedback i'll definitely appreciate that any feedback criticism and compliments all are welcome and if you have any questions feel free to post your question in the comments area thank you